We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. reflections and my disgust about how the Democratic Party since the day that President Trump was elected as president have been uh, condemning his presidency more as a hatred of him as a person than the uh, current status of them using lies to create the illusion that he's done some unethical or illegal action against the United States as a country. And I want it known here now that Obama, what he did as president, was uh, it was whitewashed from the first day he was elected to the day he left by the Democrats. They, sh uh, they overshadowed anything he did uh, and said it was justified for him to give $150 billion to Iran. It was justified that Biden helped his son, who was in Ukraine at the time, running a business, and Biden gave him immunity. He got him out of there. He was not held accountable for any illegal action that Biden's son had done. And that is what President Trump was trying and is trying to do in bringing about these facts. And uh, in the last week, Glenn Beck has posted on his web channel and on YouTube all of the actual evidence proving that it is not a conspiracy about what Joe Biden's son had been doing at this uh, company called Burmisa. He had uh, been helping uh, run the business and done many illegal things. And Glenn Beck, who people say is a conspirator, he found all the physical evidence in documentation and every kind of, of fact uh, affidavit to uh, any kind and every kind of legal document. And he posted it on his webpage to show people it is not a conspiracy when all the evidence is right there in front of you in black and white. And he posted it that way on his channel to show people Biden helped his son he gave him immunity. He got him out of that situation. And all Biden is doing during the election itself is to try to uh, disavow anything he did wrong, just like they still look at Barack Obama in the same way. Uh, nobody has ever come forward in defense of Obama giving all of that billions of dollars to Iran, who is a obvious fact uh, terrorist organization nation. They support terrorism. They advocate for the destruction of Israel. And I say people who don't like Israel should at least admit that when a nation makes threats and they carry out those threats against that nation and say, we hate you, we want you annihilated, you don't give money like Obama did to Iran and say, we're not accessories to the killings and the murders of those Jewish people who are today being singled out by the Iranians when they use drones, when they send missiles, all the rest of it. And people deny that Obama did any of these things, that he did not, they deny he gave $150 billion to Iran. John Kerry, who was involved with the Obama administration, said after Obama left office, they said that what did he, what did he do with all this money? What was the real reason for why he paid Iran all that money? Half of it, people are saying, is because it helped to pay to get our uh, hostages released from Iran. 
It's like what Ronald Reagan supposedly did when he got the hostages released in 1979, which is roughly 40 years ago. Uh, you had Jimmy Carter, who left office. He said, I will not negotiate with terrorists. And when Ronald Reagan came in, he got all the terrorists to release the hostages. And the assumption is, it was not through diplomacy. He paid them off, which is illegal. You cannot use federal money, our tax money, to pay off terrorists. And Obama did the very same thing. But I contend Obama did it because he is a Muslim himself and he wanted to help support Hezbollah. He wanted to support all of these different organizations which Iran has direct financial support for in taking out Israel as a nation. And that's what Iran has said categorically. Every time they've asked Iran why can't you have peace with Israel? Why can't you get along with them? They say we hate Israel. Every Muslim nation on earth hates Israel. And our whole uh, caliphate, our whole jihad is annihilating their nation. And Muslims believe the same Quran that the so-called radical Islamics believe, which is Allah says those who do not accept Islam are enemies of Islam and therefore they are infidels. And that's what they call all of us in America. They hate us with a passion. And yet Obama gives them all this money to an actual nation who advocates for the destruction of Israel, who hates Israel, who hates America. Richard Engel, and this is the second term when Obama was president, he went there to Tehran uh, on behalf of NBC News and they interviewed one of the diplomats who are also involved with the nuclear uh, program in Iran. And he said, these are photographs of men who have died in martyrdom and bringing about and instigating a creation of a nuclear device for Iran's use against Israel. And Richard Engel said, um, who do you think the next photograph's going to be? And this is what the guy said. He says, I hope it'll be me. He says, I am helping in any and every way I can to bring about a actual nuclear device to be created here in, in Iran that we're going to use against Israel. And Richard Engel was like, you want to be the next martyr? He says, yes, that is what Allah commands of us. Iran says we will die to the last man killing off the Israelis. And you ask, what has, Israel, what has Israel done to any nation on earth? They haven't done anything. That's the same thing that's happening right now to President Trump. He hasn't done anything. The lies that the media have been perpetrating against him for four years is something the Democrats have been pushing on the American people since the day he was inaugurated. Does anybody remember what happened on the day of President Trump's inauguration? You had women in the audience who refused to stand in respect to President Trump taking the oath of office. Then you take and you look at how did they look at Barack Obama when he became president. They were cheering in the streets. They were, they were just, just totally adamant about how great Barack Obama was, even if he hadn't done anything yet. And he never did do anything for this country. He destroyed America. He brought about communism in America today. That's what socialists are. They are communists. And they will not say that word. They will not say communism. Because they know, people know what that word stands for because they've read it in our history books. Every child that's grown up in the past 50 years knows what communism is. It's what, it's what Soviet philosophy was about during the Cold War. Communism is the destruction of freedom and individuality and the subjugation of its citizens to the philosophy that you are nothing unless the government says you are. And Obama said that for eight years as president of this country. You can't do it without the government. You cannot exist in this country unless the government helps you, finances you, uh, encourages you. In other words, he was saying, you're brain dead. You're a zombie. 
You're nothing unless the government says you are something. And that is why with President Trump, he has said, we will not be communistic in this country. We will be free. We are a country made up of individuals. We are not made up of thugs. We're not made up of gay lesbians who stand around and think that they aren't just to be accepted as far as their lifestyle, but they're saying you have to believe it. You have to believe their philosophy of what and who they are. And I say nobody has the right to tell somebody else of what they will believe and what they won't believe. That's called individual rights. The government says that only women have the right to murder unborn babies. They're the only ones that have rights in America other than a gay or a lesbian or a transgender. Anybody else who lives normal, who lives straight, have anything at all as far as what our uh, judicial system says, what our Constitution is now being reinterpreted to say. They can't change the words if it's there in black and white. So what they're doing is they're trying to uh, disintegrate it to the point where they say it doesn't function, it doesn't work as a actual viable way of running our country anymore. And they want it obliterated, they want it burned. And once they've done that, folks, that is going to be the end of individual freedom to decide what and who we are and what we are. And that's why Hillary Clinton said it from the day that she ran for president. Every American who sees any other person who is abnormal, who lives abnormally, who lives in total contradiction to nature, are considered deplorables. Hillary Clinton called that to every person who does not accept legal marijuana, who does not accept fentanyl, who does not accept heroin being legalized and used. And now on the flip side of that deplorable attitude, now you've got the government itself saying that if you're not going to live as we tell you to live and function in society as we tell you to live and exist, the Democrats now are saying, well, you're not normal, you're abnormal, you're weird, you're not entitled to have a life in this country anymore. And that's what really Hillary Clinton was saying during that time she was running for president. You can't live the way we tell you to live, then you're not only deplorable, but you have no legal right to live in this country, to exist, to be human, to be anything, because you don't believe what they believe. Does that anything sound familiar to you, how Muslims look at everybody else around them? Muslims say you're deplorable because you don't believe in Allah. You don't believe in Muslims. You don't believe in their philosophy. You don't believe in Muhammad. So therefore you're deplorable because you're not like us. You don't believe like us. So therefore Allah tells them we must kill you. You have to be eliminated. You have to be cut from head to head or from neck to neck because you don't believe what they believe. And everybody's supposed to have legal rights to believe what they want to in this country. That's not true of Christians. Christians are under total uh, uh, hatred by not only our government, but by everybody, especially the Democrats. They say Muslims are the greatest religious belief system in the world. Okay, so they kill people. Who cares? That is what Barack Obama said in one of the interviews he made. He says, if you did a statistical ratio to American citizens, he said we'd be one of the biggest Muslim nations on earth. He said that to one interviewer in France. He said, Americans are Muslim. They are not individual uh, religious believers of whatever religion they believe in. He says, we are a Muslim nation. Barack Obama said that. That told me when I heard that interview, he's a Muslim himself. He advocates for Islam. He advocates for the death of innocent people who die saying, I don't believe in Islam. I have a legal right 
to believe whatever religion I want to believe in. This is the philosophy of what Democrats are forcing on society, and that's why they attack President Trump, because President Trump is saying all of us should have the right to believe what we want to believe. It should not be one dictator like Barack Obama saying, you're going to believe this because I'm telling you to believe this. You're going to believe this because I know what's best. You don't hear Trump saying that. Trump says, first of all, Trump does not believe in political correctness. He says it exactly how he feels. He goes right from the heart and he tells it. And you know what? The lovers of Obama are absolutely infuriated by the fact that Obama pushed and advocated for political correctness, which is basically keep your hands in your lap and let us tell you what to do and accept it and do it. Trump says, forget that horse crap. That ain't going to happen because he says people are fed up with it. They're sick of political correctness. So when he says the things he says, it's like, how dare you say that? How dare you say anything that's against or in contradiction to Barack Obama? And that's what his legions do every day in this country. They advocate for Barack Obama. They advocate his philosophies. And they tell all of us, you don't believe what Barack Obama says? Too bad. This is it. It's my way or the highway. Barack Obama said that eight years every single day he said you're going to live and you're going to do things the way i tell you to because this is what communism this is what socialism is today in america it is the process of eliminating freedoms and enslaving people to the belief that communism and socialism are the only true way of surviving and running this nation and that is totally the opposite of what America was founded on. That is in total contradiction to the Constitution. The Constitution says if the government is not functioning for the good of its people, the people have the right to destroy the government and start over. Because that's what Abraham Lincoln said that, Benjamin Franklin said that, George Washington, these are all our founding fathers by the way. They said in the Constitution if the government is not functioning and running and working for the good of its people, the people have the right to start over, to destroy the government itself and say, this is not working for the good of anybody except perverts who think we got to live some degenerate way and it's supposed to make everybody equal. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to make everybody happy. It ain't making people happy. We're more divided today because of Barack Obama and what he did than since the first day President Trump became president. We've been trying to bring back the unity we had as a country. And all the Democrats have been doing since that first day when he was inaugurated is to divide us, to split us down the middle between black, between white, between Muslim, between Christian. This is their whole agenda. This is what communism is all about. Chaos breeds distrust. It breeds um, total anarchy in America. That's what we are now. And the media is helping them. The media hasn't broadcast one true fact about Trump, President Trump since he was inaugurated. For four years, four years it's been going on this way. Every single day it's been going on like this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot take a stand and know what's right or wrong, then you're going down that, 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 that cesspool, that spiral downward move that the Democrats constantly are pushing us down, and nobody else is going to pull you out of it because the Democrats themselves are holding you by the neck and strangling you and throwing you down into that pit where there is no escape. There's no way out. That's what the Democrats want. That's what the Democrats have pushed ever since, ever since Obama left. He said, don't let up on what you're doing. Keep going. And now they've gotten to the, to the deplorable status of destroying the only good man that we had as president since Ronald Reagan was president of this country. And when President Tr Bush came into office, we found out he had the same philosophy as, as Clinton, as, as Obama. 
as Carter apparently had, which is you're nothing unless the government says you are something. And that's that's what that's what communism does. It controls its people by saying you are nothing unless the government says you are something. And Obama, he's been saying that. He's been saying it off camera ever since to, to Nancy Pelosi. He's been saying it to Elizabeth Warren. He's been saying it to Schumer, to, um, to Booker T. Washington. That's what I call him. To Biden himself. Biden, Biden got away with crap as president of this country. And what do people do? They applaud him. And then, then they look at Trump and say, well, we can't let him get away with this stuff, even if Biden emails because it was fact. And then all of a sudden, society says, big deal, Hillary Clinton's uh, inexcusable, she's excusable because she's nothing. She's unimportant. She's, she's a part of the LGBT. So we all have to accept Hillary. We all have to accept Biden. We all have to accept Obama. Who cares if he gave $150 billion to Iran? Big deal. We've got to stop Trump. And it's like, really? Why? What do you do? He stands for good. He stands for truth. I'm like, that's bad. You gotta be, you gotta be Obama, a dictator, a socialist, a communist to be good, and they're acting like, yeah, that's right. That's what it's gotta be. Obama gave us heroin. Obama gave us every kind of drug we wanted, marijuana. So now, whatever he tells us, we gotta do. That's 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 the kind of mentality of a zombie. It has no individuality. It's going to respond exactly how somebody else tells them to. That's society today, folks, in America. <laughs>
around the world challenged the powerful, and they bring all of this to every story that breaks. We've got breaking news, and it's good news. And touches your heart. How do you even say thank you? Thank you is not big enough. Thank you. 